not nodding yet. Hold on. Let me get it up there. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Props to everybody that like memorized their speech. Okay, I'm ready. Rock and roll. All right, I'm here today to uh, to show how by providing uh, analytical tools to HVAC contractors, Denver has taken an impressive leap off the electrification uh, starting line. But we still have an incredible race ahead, and losing is not an option. <laughs> By training contractors to use our EFR tool, we've reduced electrification costs and timelines, created new and highly, demand service, uh, highly demanded service, and enabled collaboration among local businesses, all united in a collective effort to never drop the ball on climate. In 2021, Energize Denver Task Force published its recommendations to the city. I recall having read it and wondering how in the hell they planned on accomplishing this. But now, with up to $40 million in funding each year through the Climate Protection Fund, I'm here to share a bit about my role helping Denver do just that. Commercial buildings account for about 49% of Denver's greenhouse gas emissions. <clears throat> Achieving Denver's net zero carbon goals will require collaboration and leadership from nearly every member of our community, my team at Michaels included. Denver recently changed its permitting requirements for small unitary systems, such as rooftop units, furnaces, and water heaters. The EFR is now required to permit these systems, and in coming years, the EFR will be used to determine if these systems must be electrified upon replacement. Therein lies the problem. How to perform engineering analysis on so many pieces of equipment being replaced? I give you the EFR, a tool to bridge the gap from engineers to contractors. We now have a workforce of thousands of contractors already on site, saving thousands of dollars per project. So we're off to the races. But we still had a lot to figure out, where to buy, how to pay, and how to install the equipment. For my EV geeks, where are you, Bill? Imagine swapping a 50s uh, carbureted F-150 <laughs> F for an autonomous electric lightning. I'm behind. Uh, that's how service providers feel. OK, da, da, to date, da, da, da. More importantly, we've created a new highly demand service that pays $2,500 per EFR, $2,500 per piece of equipment, while opening the door to new clients for local contracting businesses. To date. Our pilot program has completed 247 EFRs, committing 150 grand to EFR contractors and 15 million to electrification equipment for building owners. That equates to 50,000 uh, metric tons of carbon over the life of that equipment. And not a single ball has been dropped. So what exactly does the EFR do? <clears throat> I'll save you the mumbo jumbo. Imagine a lollipop ring magically turned into the one ring that ruled them all. <laughs> That's sort of what our tool does. It evaluates hundreds of scenarios just to tell us yes or no. Bill, I see you peeping. Get out of there. Okay. But also, the EFR does way more than that. It also is providing data, lots of data. Data that's used to inform and optimize EFR rebate pricing and inform our community towards most effective solutions and answering questions like the one that has become the meaning of my existence. How much do I have to pay for you to choose electrification? Oh, no, I'm behind. Oh, no, this is my favorite part. Oh, shoot. Okay, footsteps. Okay, we lit the match. Now spread the fire. Let's show the city it's just how beneficial beneficial electrification can be. Be sure to like, share, and oh, am I really that? So we used our data to optimize rebates. I got to look at the screen a little bit more. And now, da 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 da, reverse refrigeration cycle, flux capacitor, gizmos. But wait, there's more. <laughs> there it is. But wait, there's more. You can actually stack your rebates with Denver Excel rebates combined, which is crazy. So what are the equipment rebates used for, you might ask? I thought you'd never ask. Well, we love to replace packaged rooftop units, adding cooling, saving energy, and preventing carbon emissions, and in some cases, at the same cost as the original equipment. For the nerds, we see a ton of cold climate heat pumps. Um, shout out to Luke Beckett for making that happen. For the haters, Excel will produce 80% of its electricity using renewables by 2030. Okay, so, so tell them electricity for natural gas, they can kiss your condensing unit. Uh, don't take my word for it. We've just begun surveying our contractor network, and the results are in. 62% of our contractors feel confident that we've priced our rebates efficiently, many of them realizing just how attractive electrification rebates are when, when stacking with Denver. Oh, and those barriers to adoption? Well, they aren't blaming me yet, so I get to keep my job. And actually, barriers, the most exclusive barriers are the lack of heat pump education and the expertise installing and operating the systems, as well as financial barriers. So we've set out to change both of those. From my perspective, uh, small unitary systems are easier to fund, afford, obtain, install, and operate. So the ver verdict is out. Small equipment really can perform. You got a chance, though, Luke. You just have to know where to put it and how to turn it on. For larger systems, you guessed it, harder to find. Some are asking if it even exists, and it's harder to install. And almost nobody wants to be the first person to try it out. 
right sizing means it has been a challenge across the board. And often, oftentimes, there's, it requires more significant electric service. So you have to oftentimes address that as well. So we've taken our first big leap as a city. I think there's a lot to be excited about, and there's still many more challenges to overcome. I hope you've learned a lot. Um, please like, share, subscribe, reach out. The energy transition needs your help.